Well, good afternoon. It's Ian from Ranking the Obscure. Hope everyone is well on this Tuesday. Um, before we go on today's uh, prog, um, obviously news is just getting through of the sad loss of John Lawton, ex Lucifer friend and new writer, he singer that sadly passed away on the 29th of June, age 74. Terrific singer. Um, will be sadly missed by the Heap family. Anyway, it's that after that sad news, let's get on what we're going to do today. Okay, today we are going to be looking at the albums of Michael Lee a day, Marvin Lee a day, but me and you know him better as Meat Love. Um, I'm doing Meat Love, I know he's not obscure, I think he needs a bit of love, um, there's not much on the net about um, his albums, especially his later ones, everyone seems to concentrate on them classic ones, but today I'll be ranking all 12. Um, I personally don't dislike any of the albums. Um, they've all got good tracks on and they've all got some tracks that I'm not keen on um, there are probably ones here that people that love and that I don't but again it's just it's just personal it's just personal choice um, if we all had the same uh, choices it would be quite boring but this is what it's all about and as guys you know you guys do comment on the videos and it's nice to see the different views and you know we all at the end of the day we all like the bands but we like different tracks and different albums so let's <coughs> stop and the other thing i've picked up a bit of a summer cold so i've got a bit nostrily so i'll be if i start croaking, croaking i do apologize i need some more drink right let's get cracking okay then coming in at number 12 is the 1986 album the fifth one blind before i stop um it has got some good tracks on but considering this come out because it came out in 1986 there's a lot of that 80s dirge that i just cannot stand first track uh execution day i do like this one really good um track um i saw them on this tour and I was lucky enough to see the multi-talented Bruce Keelick. Uh Bob, I mean Bob Keelick, sorry, who sadly passed away not long ago. A uh, great guitarist. Um, I do love the um, guitar in this song. Really, really good. Second track again, storming rocker, rock and roll mercenaries that he did with John Parr. It is really good. I do like this track two of the best tracks on the album then we get getting away with more murder yeah good track title it's awful it's got that horrible 80s synthy plastic dirge just don't like that track fourth track one more kiss the night of the soft parade it's a soft start then it's a heavy finish and then it goes into a soft bit. It's it's not bad for 80s rock. It's certainly better than getting away with murder. Fifth track on the album is Blind Before I Stop. Um, great track. This is what they opened up with on that tour. Really good track. Oh, I do enjoy that one. Uh, Meets but vocals on that are terrific. Um, next track, Burning Down. Uh, it's okay in parts but on the whole it's just got that horrible 80s dirge sound uh, then we get standing on the outside this is awful it's just more of that 80s dirge then we get a track called masculine it's not bad it's a good good rock song then we get man and a woman. It's absolute crap. There's no other word to describe it. 
And then if you don't think if that's crap, the next one's even worse. Special Girl. This has got to be the worst song that Meatloaf ever recorded. Awful, awful song. I never play them two songs. I just skip. Uh, and sometimes I don't even play Rock and Roll Hero, the last track. It's just a poor 80s rap. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Um, apart from the first couple of tracks, the old album is awful. I don't say that very often. Okay then, coming in at number 11 is the 1983 album, the third one, Midnight at the Lost and Found. Uh, this is what the first album he did without Jim Steinemann after his two first albums. It's a bit hit and miss this is, but it has got some good tracks on. Razor's Edge opens up the album. That is a good track. Uh, it's, it's typical meatloaf. Uh, it's got the guitars and the piano, the backing vocals. It, it's a it's, it's very solid track. Then we get Midnight of the Lost and Found title track. Love this track. Best one on the album. And I do like it live. Great, great track. Then we get Wolf at Your Door. Oh... It's a little bit weak, but it's pleasant enough, you know, I don't skip it. Keep driving, a uh, standard meatloaf song, you know. Then we get a cover, uh, The Promised Land, Chuck Berry. Not a bad cover, actually. Then we get a track called You Never Can Be Too Sure About The Girl. Oh, worst track on the album, never like this absolute horrible track Oof. then we get Priscilla another track that it just doesn't do anything for me then we get a track called uh, Don't Look At Me Like That it's an okay, okay song it tried to be an epic but it just lacks something and I think that something was called Jim Steinemann <laughs> It had so much potential, but it just... It was one of them tracks, you keep... Come on, keep, keep... Do something. No, it was flat. So, I, I don't skip it, but it, it just a slack something. Then we do get a good track in the next one, if you really want to. Really good track. And then... We get Fallen Angel. Again, it just lacked that something. It had so much potential, that track but it just falls apart okay it's not a bad album I suppose but it's got some it's got as I said it's got mixed bag of tracks on it okay then coming in number 10 is the eighth album from 2003 couldn't have said it better very solid album it's got one or two tracks on here that I'm not quite sure about but on the whole, it is a good album. So you open up with the title track, couldn't have said it better. I do like this track. It is a good, solid meatloaf. What it does on the tin sort of meatloaf track, you can't go wrong with that. Excuse me. Second track, um, Did I Say That? Another good rocker from meatloaf. Everything that you get from a rock, track for Meatloaf, great guitar work, nice drums, good production, can't go wrong. And considering Meatloaf's voice was not as strong as it used to be though, he does put a solid performance in. Then we have Why Isn't That Enough, another solid track, nice track. Uh, Love You Out Loud, this is a solid rocker again. Really, really good track. Um, Meat's vocals are a little bit, he, he's, he can't hit them high notes like he used to, but he still puts a fine performance in. Then we get uh, Man of Steel. This needs just more guitar in it. It's a good track, but it needs more guitar. Then we get this little, it's called Intermezzo. 1 minute 28 of nothing. I cannot understand why we have these little interludes like that. It just didn't fit on the album. 
Then we get uh, Testify, great track, great solid meatloaf track. Then we get Tear Me Down, another good solid track. Um, can't go wrong with this. Uh, next track, You're Right, I Was Wrong. It's just another of them tracks that just lacks something. And again, it's called Jim's Dominant. So the track is actually good, but it just needs a little bit more. Then we get Because of You, uh, this is a bit flat. And poor old Meatloaf's voice just doesn't sound right in this. It, it, it makes me, it makes you cry because, you know, I've seen Meatloaf at his finest, you know. At the end of the day, he is 73, he's had health problems and he still keeps going and you've got to admire him for that. Then we get Do It, Little Rocker, this is, this is good. Then we get Forever Young, uh, the Bob Dylan song. I mean, it's not the best cover I've heard. Uh, and then we get Mercury Blues. Uh, great little track, that is. Really, really good. Okay, coming in at number nine. is his 10th album from 2010. Hank Called Teddy Bear. First track on here, Peace on Earth. Great opening track in true me loaf style. Great guitars on this. It's all it starts off like a typical meatloaf start of a great song. I and mean, this is a great song. One of my favourites from the album. Okay, second track, Living on the Outside. Again, it's a great track, but Poor old Meat's voice is starting to it, it it doesn't sound right and you just feel for him. He just can't hit some of them notes like he used to. Uh third track, Los Angeles. Nice quirky number this is. Uh gets your feet tapping. Let me get an interesting track. If you can't if I can't have you. This features uh, American singer Carla. The Ogardi and the actor Hugh Laurie. Yes, George from Blackadder. Yeah, good song though. Then the next one is a cracker. It's Love Is Not Real, Stroke Next Time You Stab Me In The Back. This features Brian May and Stevie Vai on guitars. Oof, absolutely belts it out. Great guitar work for these two really strong track and meets vocals are good I think it is because he's got these two great guitarists they sort of it just works well next track Like a Rose this features the one and only Mr Jack Black this is a great duo between Meat and Jack uh, it's a bit Beastie Boys in the in it but it's it's a good solid rock track really really good and it's a bit of fun as well. And uh, then we get a cool song of madness. Uh, I think got Stevie Vai on it. It's not bad at all. His guitar works really good on this. Then you get Did You Ever Love Somebody? That's quite it's okay, really good. Uh, then California isn't big enough. Uh, hey there girl um, it's an average song doesn't do much for me then we get uh, Running Away From Me another good solid song just what you expect from Meatloaf number 11 track uh, Let's Be In Love this features the fantastic pa Patty Rousseau who sang on the fur who sang on Bat Out Of Hell and toured with him she's got a great voice and them two carrying working together singing together always works absolutely brilliant track then we get if it rains this is one of them other tracks that sort of lacks something i do like the track but it just needs a little bit more injection a bit more beef 
and it ends up with a track called Elvis in Vegas. Nice track this is, and Meat Meat's voice is pretty good on that as well. Okay then, coming in at number eight is his next album after the ones of so these have got hand called Teddy Bear. This is from 2011, the 11th album, Hell in a Hand Basket. Now, this album is really good. I think they took a look at what they did on the previous album and they've sort of brought the music down to how the meets voice and it works. This album is terrific. His, his vocal on this is really strong as well. Uh, the first track, All of Me, really good track. Uh, a proper opening track of a Meatloaf album, of course. And, and Meatloaf just sounds brilliant on it. He's hitting the notes, but I think it's because it's all been put down in a different key that suits his voice. And I like that, how the bands with the singers, I mean, Ian Gillen's another example. They sort of play around him now, and that's why their last album's fantastic. Second Trace, second track, Fall From Grace. This reminds me of an opening of a Bon Jovi song from, you know, they're one of their later tracks. Good track, really good track. Then we get The Giving Tree, another solid track. Sounds really good. Um, as, as um, meets voice is really good I don't know what he done gargles some something but he sounds really good on that right next track Mad World uh, it's okay you think it's good and then you get a rapper Chuck D and it ruins it forget it once that rap voice comes in I switch off I just cannot stand rap Simple as. Then we get Party of One. Good rocker. Solid rocker. Really, really good. It, it sort of goes away at a nice steady pace. Really good. Then we get Live or Die. Another stormer from uh, Meatloaf. He sounds fantastic on this. Sounded like he did in the, his heyday. Absolutely belts it out for that one. Then we get a, another Kurt cover. Uh, they cover California Dreaming. Yes, it's not the best. Patty Russo duo is on her, and her performance is good, but me, nah, we just couldn't cope with this one. And I mean, it's one of my favourite songs, and it's not the best one. Another Day. It's another, well, this is another track. Needs a bit more beef. It's a good it's a good song, it just needs an extra oomph. Then we get a track called Forty Days. This is a bluesy rocker. Solid track. Then he does another duo with Patty on Our Love Our Souls. This is awesome. This is uh Meat Both and Patty Russo at their best. Terrific. Uh, then we get another track where he's got special appearances, Stand, Stand in the Storm. This has got Little John, John Rich and Mark McGrath. It's a good rocker, even though there's a bit of rapping in it, I do like that. Then he ends up with a song called Blue Sky. No, he, he, he tried to hit high notes again and it just didn't, didn't work. And it's so sad because the song is terrific. Okay then, number seven is his twelfth and most current album. Came out in two thousand and sixteen. Uh, better than we are. This is he's back with Jim Steinerman, and the songs on this are great. Got it all sorted out. Meets voice is sounding fantastic. Uh, first track. Who Needs the Young, great bluesy sound this is, and it slows right down, you can tell Jim's back at the helm, really good track. Then we have a classic, uh, Going All The Way, 
This features Ellen Foley, who sang on the first tour, sang with Carla DeVito. You've got three prominent voices from the Bat Out of Hell days, all singing on this. It's a classic. True, true classic. Then we get a track called uh, Speaking in Tongues. This features, um, I think she was an actress, a child actress, was in the voice covers in the Resquiz and things like that. Uh, Stacey Michelle, good singer. Uh, great vocal from her. And then you get another song, Loving You is a Dirty Job, but someone's got to do it. Stacey Michelle's on this again. Another great vocal performance. Then we get Souvenirs, classic Steinemann song, delivered by Meatloaf superbly. That's the only way to describe it. It's everything you expect from a song from Jim Steinemann. Another got another person that's sadly missed. Terrific writer, performer, and that's one of his best. Um, then we get Only When I Feel. This is a little two minute thing, but it's good. It's a, you know, for once we've got a little ditty that actually sounds okay. Then we do it, then there's another cover song. This one time it's more from the Sisters of Mercy. He doesn't do a bad job of this one. Then we get a thing called Gods. I, it doesn't work. It, it meets just, meatloaf's just talking. The only person really do that well on tracks is Jim Steinle. Why didn't he do it? Who knows? But it just didn't work, that one. Then we get a really good track called Skull of Your Country. This has got another singer, Sean Coey. Uh, it's a classic. Classic song again from Jim Steinman. You just can't get any better. Uh, then we end up with a, tra a track called Train of Love. It's a bit of a filler, but it's okay. Okay then, coming in at number six is the seventh album from 1995, Welcome to the Neighbourhood. Um, I would say this is the last album that Meat Loaf sounded like the old Meat Loaf. Again, a lot of the songs on here are absolutely brilliant. Opens up with another classic when rubber meets the road. Corker start to the album. This is uh, it's just a classic uh, rocker and a great vocal from Meatloaf. Then we have um, I'd Lie for You and that's the truth. Very popular song. Solid track from John Jim Steinman. Just can't get any better. Then we get the best song on the album, Original Sin. Now I've got this on a Jim Steinerman solo album. There's a couple of solo albums. Um, I will be reviewing them. Um, and I've always loved this song, but this version is the best. Great, great song. Then we get 45 seconds of ecstasy. Pointless, pointless. Doesn't do anything for you, doesn't fit on the album. Then we get Running for the Red Light. Oh, it's got great driving guitar in this. Really good, solid song. Then we get a thing called Fiesta de la Malas Paderas. It's just some Spanish pointless crap. 1 minute 27. But luckily we go back into a classic um, Meatloaf and Jim Stallman track called Left in the Dark. Uh, then we get another great song not to dry out eye in the house classic song everything you expect from a Jim Steinman masterpiece then we get a track that was written by a certain Mr Sammy Hagar Amnesty is Granted love this great drumming heavy guitar and cowbells great great track heavy as they like it's one of the heaviest songs I've heard Meatloaf do then we get a track called If This Is The Last Kiss, Let's Make It Last All Night. Solid track. More of the same for Meatloaf. Um, people say, oh, all well, these songs are the same. Yeah, but they're good. I do like them. Then we get Martha, 
worst track on the album not written by Jim Starman I'm funny that uh, then we get uh, where the angels sing good solid track okay now we're I'm into the top five and these are the the creme de la creme of uh, well in my books of uh, meatloaf so coming in at number five is the 1984 album the fourth bad attitude I do like this album uh, it's got some great great tracks on it for example the opening track title track bad attitude um, depends where you come from for some reason in America uh, the American version the duo on it is done by Roger Daltrey I've heard it it's great it's one of my favourite tracks by Meatloaf Bad Attitude Bad Attitude really really good and then we get another classic song uh, Modern Girl this always reminds me of I saw Meatloaf at Nebworth when Deep Purple played I mean it was a dreadful day for weather and Meatloaf actually performed the he set with a broken leg he was hopping around the stage but it was absolutely brilliant and he, he broke his leg actually singing this song and he was in an interview he said he wasn't give me the future with a modern girl give me the future with a hospital he said but I love that track then we get a track called Nowhere Fast it's very 80s but it's a good track. It's one of them catty tunes you just can't get out of your get out of your head. Then we get Surfs Up. This is another track from Jim Steinerman that's on one of his solo albums. It's a great track. Always liked it. But when he gives it to Meatloaf to sing, it, it just gives it an extra special thing. Uh, next track, Piece of the Action. Another good track. Solid as you like. Then we get Jump in the Gun okay this is a bit 80s but it's a guilty pleasure this track for me I do like it because it's, it's quite catchy then we get cheating in your dreams uh, written by John Parr uh, another solid song really really good then we get a track called don't leave your mark on me boy does this sound like um, St Elmo's fire but then again John Parr wrote this and he sang on St Omar's Fire but it's an okay track I'm, I don't look, dislike it but the one I don't like is Siren, Sailor to Siren I just don't like it simple as I can't even comment on it because I don't play it I'll put it on for about 10 seconds and go yeah I still don't like it okay then uh, coming in at number 4 is a very underrated album uh, it's the second album from 1981 Dead Ringer I think after you've had an absolute monster this one sort of but, but gets overlooked and it's a shame because this has got some absolutely belters on it um, first track Peel Out love how this starts it's got great guitar work great track then another classic uh, I'm gonna love you for the both of us I love how this starts you got a bass and piano just working together and meatloaf's vocals on it again terrific then we get one of my favorite tracks of all time uh, top five song for meatloaf more than you deserve I just love this Jim Steinerman and uh, meatloaf working in harmony He's so good. Next track, uh, if if I kill you, hang on, I'll kill you if you don't come back. Another great rocker. Another great classic sounding meatloaf track. Everything you need from it. Uh, then we get no reap them than weep. Another one of those classic songs. And then we get a monologue by Jim Steinerman, Nocturnal Pleasure. It's great because then it goes storming into Dead Ringer for Love. I love this track. I know it's one that's played and played, but 
it is just a great, great, great track. And Cher's vo vocals on this is terrific. And I do love the video to this. And it's another song that's great live because he sort of plays it out. And it's brilliant. Uh, then we get a track called Everything Is Permitted. This is a stormer with one of the best guitar solos off a of Meatloaf album. Okay then, coming in at number three. These are sort of in a, an order now. You must know how they're going to come. Uh, so number three is the 2006 album, the ninth, Bat Out of Hell 3, The Monster Is Loose. Love, I do love these Bat Out of Hell albums. They are my favourites. Can't deny it. Um, first track, great heavy dark track, The Monster Is Loose. Written by a certain Desmond Child and uh, Nicky Six from Motley Crue. Absolutely belting song. Uh, then we get Blind as a Bat. Got us another one of them classic songs from Jim Stone. Here. This is an album you just play from start to finish. You don't pick out tracks, you just play it. Then we get a, pot, a track uh, called "It's All It's All Coming Back to Me Now." He uses he does a duet with uh, Marion Raven. This blows Celine Dion's version out of the water. Oh, don't like her singing, <laughs> but I do love this. Then we get another track uh, that's on a earlier album from Jim Starman, uh, "Bad for Good," but this has got Brian May on it. Can't go wrong if you've got Brian May playing guitar on the album. Really good Drake track. Then we get Cry Over Me. It's okay, but it's not my favourite track on the album. It's alright, I've got one of the dogs around me. <laughs> then we get the best track on the album. In the Land of the Pig, The Butcher is King. I love this driving guitar riff in this. Um, it's, it's it is the best song on the album and it's terrific then we get this little choral thing it's only one minute uh, 39 seconds long but it's quite a nice little diddle diddle ditty then we get uh, a track called Alive terrific song with great guitar solo and strings then we get a track called If God Could Talk uh, written by Desmond Child. Uh, it's a nice track. Nice, really, song. Then we get a track called If It Ain't Broke, Break It. It's an okay song, but what makes this song is the guitar solo and the horns. Next track, What About Love, uh, duo of Patty Russo again. Good, solid track. Another great duo with, with Patty. Uh, then we get Seize the Night, another classic from the hands of Steinerman, can't go wrong. Then we get uh, a track called The Future Ain't What It Used To Be, a duo with Jennifer Hudson. I don't like it. She's, she ruins it. She, 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 she's not singing, she's howling. I, I just don't get what she's trying to prove. Just didn't work. Then we have the last track, Cry to Heaven. It's got a real nice Celtic feel to it. Love this track. And you know I like my Celtic stuff. Uh, coming in number two. It's the 1993 six album, Bat Out of Hell 2. Back in Hell. Another solid album. It's just funny how these are ranked, really. I never thought it would end up like this, but I listened to them. This is how it ended up. Uh first track I'll do anything for love but I won't do that it's got one of the best starts of any meatloaf song but it's one of them songs if I don't hear again I won't get upset I'm not saying it's rubbish I just oh, I think it was at number one forever I think even the best rock fans got um, started getting bored of it uh, second track my favourite track on this album Life is a lemon and I want my money back. Great drumming start, great vocals, great backing singing. Wait, 
can't go wrong. Then we get a track called uh, Rock and Dream, Rock and Roll Dreams Come Through. This is a bit different from Eat Life. Uh, it's not the usual sort of sound, but it's a good track. It's got a bit of bongos in it. it really is good. Uh, then we get a track called I Just Won't Quit. Another top draw song from Jim Steinerman that Meatloaf delivers in that way. Terrific song. Okay, then we get a song called Out the Frying Pan and Into the Fire. This is another song that I've always liked because it's on one of Jim Steinerman's uh, solo albums, but this is the definitive version. Then we get a great song, and it's apparently it's one of the Meat Loaf's favourite songs that he's ever recorded. Objects in the rear view mirror may appear closer than they are. And he's right, it's one of Jim Steinerman's best songs. You just can't get any better than that. It's it's in the you know, it's top ten material that one. Let me get one of Jim Steinerman's monologues, Wasted Youth. And that goes straight into a track called Every Lou Everything Louder Than Everything Else. It's um, it sort of continues on from the monologue. Uh, great rocking track. Next track on here is called "Good Girls Go to Heaven and Bad Girls Go Everywhere." Another track that I've always liked, but this again is the most definitive uh, version. Then then we get an instrumental called "Back Into Hell." Great instrumental piece. Strings, guitar brilliant stuff then the last track uh, Lost Boys and Golden Girls another great song from Jim Steinerman that's on one of his solo albums always like this and I remember seeing Meatloaf on his 10th anniversary tour of Bat Out of Hell so it would have been about 87 and he actually played this you know everyone went man it was nice to hear that song live because you know it was, it was actually off a Jim Starman record and you get that so it's obvious what number one is uh, Bat Out of Hell 1977 it is probably one of the one of the best albums ever made it's in my top five of my favourite albums of all time it's one of my favourite covers and I've got my dog singing in the background uh, hope he doesn't put you off got folks <laughs> okay first track on the album of course is the iconic bat out of hell um, this is just a epic it's one of them songs you can hear as many times and I still don't get bored of this there are certain things you don't get bored of, and this is one of them. A bit like Laura and Hardy. Watch their films so many times, and I still laugh at them. So, you know, now and again you get things like that. Um, I do like the guitar solo in this at the start. I like the dramatic ending. It, just everything that you want in a rock song. Let me get, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth on a hot summer night great story to the song great delivery what more can you say there's not much you can say about songs on this album we all know them and this is why it's such a great great album then we get Heaven Can Wait this is a classic ballad you don't get bored of hearing this great performance by Meatloaf terrific vocal on this then we get another of my favourites, all revved up with no go place to go. I love how this song starts and just keeps building and building. I love the sax solo in this. And then you get that hard rocking bit at the end. Another song that sounds brilliant live. Then we get side two of the album, if those remember albums. Uh, two out of three and bad. Okay, this is a classic song. But it's not my favourite from the album. But I do respect the greatness of it. I just, it's my least favourite track on the album. I know, that's shocking, but it is. 
Uh, but then we get my favourite track and my favourite meatloaf track of all time, Paradise by the Dashboard Line. I just love the story behind it and I think everyone somewhere in the world can um, relate to this song. This is another song that when it's performed live is absolutely brilliant. Um, that's what I like about Meatloaf's concerts. They were great. I saw him three times and I think on that 10th anniversary show I think he was on for about three hours. It was brilliant. I mean this song went on for 20 minutes. Uh, brilliant. And then it end, the last track on the album is my favourite ballad from Jim Steinerman and Meatloaf for crying out loud. This is so moving. The words are just fantastic. There's not much more you can say, but what a great way to finish one of the greatest albums ever made. So that's Meatloaf. Uh, got something a bit different to do as well, um, but for now I will say goodbye, and I think I need to go and feed the dogs, because that's what he was barking at. So I'll see you all very shortly. Take care for now.